What's up, family? This is your boy E. Dewey Smith. Sunday morning, on my way to House of Hope, Atlanta. What's up, family? Hope you guys are looking forward to a great worship experience. I'm so excited about today. It is a month of meekness, and what a week it has been. Don't get any better than this. God has been good. Uh, God has been gracious, and we are going to the Lord's house. This is a day the Lord has made. We are all rejoiced, and we'll be glad in it. I mean, what a week it's been. Cowboys won last week. Falcons won last week. The Georgia Bulldogs won yesterday. Crazy week. Uh, all is well in the Lord, and I'm excited about it, and I hope you are too. Uh, Sunday's the time when we get away and we spend uh, and worship with God. Uh, God is certainly worthy of that. For me, my whole week starts better when I put God first. Uh, we put God first. Good morning from Houston. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mo Tim, Mo Trim, for joining. Thank you, Houston, for being a part. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes my week just doesn't seem to go right if I don't start the week off with uh, the worship and praise to God. So I'm excited about today. It's our month of meekness at the House of Hope, and great things have been happening. Jesus said something uh, in the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount that was so powerful, but it's uh, relevant right now. Don't forget this. He says that blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, they'll inherit the earth. That's an inheritance that you can get simply by walking in humility and meekness. Amen. He didn't talk about inherit the heavens. He said, well, inherit the earth. That's something that you can inherit right now before we even get to heaven. I'm excited about that. And I believe that God can allow us to be heirs and you know, to be the recipients of great things in the here and now. Good morning from Baton Rouge. Praying for you. I know you guys must be feeling well with that victory yesterday with LSU. Uh, Leonard Fournette, that's a bad boy. Um, Look like I used to run football back in the day. Um, Lord, don't get me for don't get me for lying on Sunday morning. I, I ran it, not the good he did, but I, I was, I was, your boy wasn't too bad <laughs> in his day either. So I'm, I want you to know that God has some great things in store. Uh, I, I want you to know that whatever you're going through, it happened for a purpose, for a plan. And I, I, I really want to just emphasize to people that there are blessings that can come to us if we just humble ourselves. Thank you so much for the wonderful couple I'm off I praise God. I'm about that. Um, when we walk in the ways of God, we do things God has called us to do. Um, people ask me all the time, well, how do you how do you get elevated or how should we seek promotion? But I, I never really sought promotion, you know. I just think that's most important that we serve and let God do what God does. Sometimes people just jockey for position. And one of the things about meekness is when it's authentic meekness, meekness never has to fight its way or press its way or connive his way to the top. And unfortunately, sometimes so many people uh, in this rat race of trying to climb up and sometimes like a, a bucket of crabs trying to pull the other one back because we want to get to the top first. We want to such a drive, such a push to be first and to be preeminent. That's not my, my, my forte. And I think that's what Jesus talked about, that often those who will exalt themselves, they will be amazed. Those who will honor themselves, they shall be exalted. It's very, very clear in scriptures. If you want to go high, humble yourself under the hand of the Almighty God, and, and God is able to exalt you. Exalt you. Uh, scriptures tell us that God resists the proud. That means He puts His finger of stagnation to limit, to restrict, uh, to restrain those who are prideful. And then God gives grace to the humble. And I, and I want you to know that humility is a trait that is certainly needed in our world, uh, in corporate sectors, in the public square. Sadly, it's needed even in the church. Uh, sometimes narcissism and egotism are more prevalent in the church or in sacred spaces than they are in secular, uh, secular spaces. So I want you to know that some great things are happening. I'm excited about what God is doing. I want you to share with me some of your praise reports, some of your prayer requests as we get ready to go worship God together. Uh, if you're not in worship this morning, you can log on to houseofhopeatl.org. Uh, check out a message I'll be preaching in about 20 minutes. God has given me a great uh, message, I believe, that's blessed my heart and hope it blesses you. Amen. The, the great sermon I preached at T. T okay, okay, yeah, that's right. Somebody saw the sermon at, at the leadership conference last year in Orlando. Uh, what's wrong What's wrong with the carpet? I mean, that's been my, my mantra, my motto. And that sermon basically juxtaposed the duality of Jesus because so often we see Jesus only as king and we all always focus on uh, not always, but more likely than not, we tend to focus on the royal side of Jesus. And there is a divine, there is a royal side of Jesus that can't be omitted. You know, Jesus is King of Kings. He's, Jesus is Lord of Lords. But there's only one side 
of who Jesus is. And I think sometimes our desire to want to be ballers and shot callers, our desire to want to be all of that fabulous and wonderful, it makes us focus on being kings and sons and daughters of that kingdom and royal uh, priests and royal priests. And, I, and don't get me wrong, there's a royal side. God can elevate us. The book of Revelation talks about uh, God big, making us kings and queens. Oh, that's fine. But the challenge is a lot of us want to be kings and queens, but we don't want to stand in servanthood. And uh, unfortunately, what I'm seeing is that the lack of servanthood, the lack of humility, uh, Jesus was a carpenter. And because he, he was served as a carpenter and served in carpentry, it was the carpentry that allowed him to get up. So that's right. So it's clear it's time to get up. And so I just want us to know that we have also served. Uh, a lot of us want to reign, but a lot of us don't want to serve. And so wherever you are managed to whatever you're doing, uh, service is the way to the top. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And I preached a sermon a few weeks ago about David. How ironically, when God sent the man of God down to Jesse's house to anoint the first, the next king of Israel, after Saul had been dethroned by God, that uh, Jesse didn't bring all of his sons into the party. Uh, he brought the first seven. Uh, but when you read the narrative, you discover that the oil would not pour on none of those older boys' heads. And it's amazing. Uh, and it blessed me that even though his father or his brothers didn't recommend him to come in, if you were for the coronation service, he was in the back tending to the sheep. But that was an oil that had David's name on it. And don't you ever forget, your oil knows your name. And your oil won't pour for anybody else except you. So nobody can take your oil. I don't know who got there first. Even if you weren't invited to the party, uh, that doesn't mean uh, that somebody can take what God has for you. And it also said to me that sometimes even your own brothers and your own family may not think that you're deserving to be invited. Uh, but it's wonderful that even when you face rejection and people who are close to you don't think much about you, that we serve a God who knows who you are and uh, your oil knows your name. So uh, you don't have to fight for the oil. You don't have to connive for the oil. You don't have to pass out business cards to make people see that you're oily. You know, the way to get it is to keep on serving. It was so bad uh, that this man of God said to, uh, to, to Jesse, do you have another son? I mean, he, he had to recommend, he had to ask the question, do you have another son? And then Jesse said, yeah, I got another son. He's out in the back dating, but you can't be talking about him. He's a he's a rooty, he's a rooty looking fella. He said, go get him, go get him, and you bring him out. And when they brought David into the house, guess what, the oil poured. Uh, I've never tried to fight my way into daddy's house. I've never tried to fight to get on stage. Too many people desire to plat the platform. Um, it's, it's not about that. It's about knowing what your assignment is, being faithful to the assignment, and letting God do elevated. So I hope that you've been blessed this morning. I want you to know God has an oil on your name this week. Uh, let somebody know you can follow your on Periscope. There's an oil that's specifically for you. Nobody can take it. Walk in that oil, embrace the oil, and know that the best is yet to come. Check us out today, houseofhopeatl.org. If you're not, uh, and worship yourselves. That's right, go Cowboys, do the doggone thing. Let's also put Tony Romo's back on our prayer list. And let's also be in prayer for Dez Bryant's, Dez Bryant's broken foot. Uh, we, let's come on, get real quick, Dez. Let's go worship God together. Check me out. I'm going to have a wonderful word that God has given me a word. I've been so excited about it. Check it out this morning. Uh, House of Hope, ATL.org. I love y'all. Be strong. Uh, that's right, receive your oil. It's yours. Nobody can take it. Your oil knows your name. Thank you.